When Sarah the Jaguar scratched someone in March, someone from the U.S. Department of Agriculture came here to inspect the enclosure, and they found the public barrier was inadequate. So we came to the zoo to find out what they did about it. You're up. There we go. Even on a warm day, people love being in the shaded oasis of the Wildlife World Zoo and Aquarium in Litchfield Park. <laughs> but behind these barriers of metal fencing and block walls, danger still lurks. Sarah the Jaguar swiped at a guest who leaned over the barrier in the spring. There are four feet between the primary barrier and the secondary barrier. And we do know that she did cross the barrier in order for the incident to take place. But it's not the first time. According to this USDA inspection report, a member of the public leaned over the barrier and was scratched in the summer of 2018. And we talked to a former zookeeper who said she was attacked by a jaguar through the metal fencing while working at the zoo in November of 2018. After the March incident this year, a USDA inspector came to the facility and cited them, saying the public barrier in front of the jaguar enclosures is inadequate saying visitors can reach out and touch the bars of these enclosures and that the zoo must ensure there is sufficient distance and or barriers. Christy Morcom with the Wildlife World Zoo says they've added another layer to the block wall and added tighter metal wiring around the enclosure. Even though the zoo added height to their barrier, we have still seen people today leaning over to get pictures of Sarah with their cell phones. Given what you guys have done, do you think anything like that could happen again? I think it's really important for guests and for people to learn from what happened back in spring. No barrier is foolproof. It appears that it took a second human injury and a USDA citation before the facility made any effort to change the barrier. Rebecca Smidzinski is with People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, or PETA. She says the standards of the Animal Welfare Act, which are enforced by the USDA, are so minimal that when a facility is cited, it grabs their attention, like the incident with Sarah this year. No one should be surprised when a captive wild animal, especially a wide-roaming predator, takes the opportunity to follow their natural instincts and shows aggression towards humans. We analyzed the USDA inspection data for Wildlife World Zoo for the past five years. And while they had nine perfect inspections, other visits resulted in some non-compliant items, like some shelters needing repair, no heat for primates, deer and goats with long hooves, and an inadequate barrier around the leopard enclosure. Morecambe says they remedied everything immediately and added foliage to the leopard enclosure, passing subsequent inspections. If they hadn't, the USDA could consider legal action, fines, license suspensions, or even animal confiscation. PETA is not a credible animal welfare organization. Period. Dr. Grace Stafford is a self-proclaimed animal and zoo advocate and worked with Wildlife World Zoo from 1999 to 2002 and again from 2004 to 2016. He takes issue with the fact that the facility was cited after the Jaguar attack in March. That facility had never been found to be non-compliant prior to the incident. He says consumers should do the research when it comes to picking which zoos to support. Stafford also believes zoos are under siege at a crucial time for animal conservation. More, more. Oh, Back at Wildlife World Zoo, Morecambe says they take every violation seriously and strive for perfect inspections every time. It is difficult when you get a non-compliant item, but these inspections are another set of professional eyes, and they have the same goal that we do, which is providing our animals with the best possible care. So it's something we take very seriously. In Litchfield Park, Lindsay Riser for Arizona's Family.